Joe, let's start with you. Bryant called you personally to apologize. What did he say? Uh, you know, he took ownership for his actions and he said that he was genuinely sorry, which for me was uh, a significant development because uh, during the day yesterday or in the afternoon, as you may have seen, he said what a lot of people in public life say when they do things like this or say things like this, which is that uh, he, he felt badly that what he said might have offended someone. You know, as if uh, I said something that didn't offend a lot of people but might have offended a few. So to those of you who were offended, I feel badly about it. And you know, that to was my way of thinking, you? that wasn't an apology. No, to my way of thinking, that's not a, a genuine, honest or sincere apology. And, uh, and, and we, we spoke to that yesterday afternoon and said such. And so when he called me last night, he genuinely apologized. He took uh, responsibility and ownership for his actions. And uh, he said he was sincerely sorry. Uh, he was ashamed of what he said and thought about his family and his kids and, and how people he mm -hmm. knew and respected would react to it. And ultimately that he was going to do the work to make right by us. And John, I want to ask you, uh, not only did he use this gay slur, but he added the F word uh, when venting his frustration on top of that. Why do you think that is? I mean, I think we've got to a point now where people in all walks of life, but certainly in sport, seem to think that the when you dig deepest, when you are most frustrated, that the worst, word, the worst thing you can do is tell another man that you think they are like a gay person. Um, I think this is just an example of that happening in society. In sports, we sometimes give it a pass because we think in the heat of the moment, sometimes these things happen. But when you rise to the status of Kobe Bryant, you don't necessarily get to have those moments. Because what we're seeing here, certainly with that call to Joe, is that you get to make a mistake uh, that publicly hurts a lot of people, and it has hurt a lot of people offended a lot of people, but you get to apologize for it almost in private on a one-to-one -one phone call. And, and, and what we need to see is these people actually being contrite about their mistake and making that public. And, and Roland, uh, what do you think? Would the NBA had fined Brian if this hadn't been caught on tape? No, nope, not at all. There's no doubt in my mind they wouldn't have fined him uh, because, look, if you read David Stern's comments, and actually he said that uh, there's no place for uh, derogatory statements like this in the game. The question I would have for the NBA, did you find Kobe as a one-off or was it a question of workplace harassment? How did the NBA actually frame it? I think about Donald Sterling, who's the owner of the L.A. Clippers, heckling one of his own players, Baron Davis, during a game. Is that considered workplace harassment? I think what the NBA should do, if you want to find Kobe Bryant for the comment, like they did, you should do so under the guise of workplace harassment. So the question then becomes, if a coach makes a comment to a player, if a coach calls a player a sissy, if he calls them the B word, if he says anything else, how do you define that? I think about 1996, Bill Parcells referred to Terry Glenn, one of his own players, as she instead of he. Would the NFL say, wait a minute, that's, that's inappropriate. So there's no doubt in my mind the NBA did a PR move here by finding Kobe mm -hmm. Bryant as opposed to saying this fell under workplace harassment. Uh, John, I want to get back to you. Um, if this had been, uh, if Kobe Bryant had been a white player, if this had been a white player who, may, who might have used the N-word uh, against a referee, would, would this have been any different? I mean, can you compare the, the, a gay slur to the use of the N-word for me? I think, unfortunately, we are still in a position where people think that certain words have different weights and the N-word is a crushing word that sucks the, the oxygen out of a room, whereas um, using gay slurs like this F-word somehow are something that only the, only the overly sensitive take to heart. So I do fear that the reaction would have been far more severe uh, had it been a white player uh, making a racist comment to a black referee and not this particular circumstance. So what needs to change? Actually, Randy Kay, yep. actually, Randy Kay, uh, Elgin Baylor filed a lawsuit against, and I'm picking on Donald Sterling, and he alleged racial discrimination against one of the NBA owners. David Stern has not taken any action against one of his own owners. Uh, and so I understand John's point, but there's actually, you know, current cases where you have a disagreement there whether that, actually, that action would have been taken by the NBA.